Hey everybody, welcome to a special video here. I'm on with the one and only Grum Brindall. We're sitting down to talk today about his upcoming project that he's building as part of the UDN uh, to bring into Upland called Upland Kingdoms. Grum Brindall, thank you for taking the time to be here. It's good to sit down and talk with you. It's a pleasure to be here as well and talk about my project. For those that may not know you, um, maybe they're not on Discord or as active in the community, we just take five minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started with Upland, and then how you got started as a third-party developer. Yeah, sure thing. So I've been in Upland since 2020, October 2020, so I've been here for a while. And um, it all started when I built out uh, my collection optimizer, which is originally a Discord bot. Pretty much, I didn't want to go through and, you know, try to slot all my properties manually and find out which one went where. So I started building out a bot and then I had this database. So I started adding, you know, other features like sales history and then it got into me building out a website. So I run the uplandoptimizer.com. And then, uh, yeah, I kept programming for Upland. I've been working on it ever since. Uh, I entered the hackathon, the first hackathon, and I won that. And the entire, over the entire last year, I've been trying to think of a good game idea to build out for Upland. And I finally settled on Upland Kingdoms because I thought like, okay, I want to build something I enjoy playing. Mm. And so I decided to build this. And for the past five months, I've been plugging away at it and hopefully getting it ready to release out to the rest of Upland. So I think the best way to describe it is kind of a slow paced city builder slash Age of Empires type thing. Basically, what I wanted to try to do with the game was to give value to the properties you own in Upland and the buildings we're building on them. And so I thought, hmm, how do I do this? Well, if we add all these little, you know, peasants and workers that work on your properties, you're going to have to, you know, build farms or blacksmiths or, uh, you know, a kitchen for them to cook stuff in and feed themselves. And so all this is building toward being able to build up an army and then eventually go to war against other players playing in Upland Kingdoms so you can make them into vassals. So Basically, you can try to expand your holdings without actually buying additional props in Upland. That said, you can also take these properties that you owned, and if you sell them to another player, all the buildings and the peasants that happen to be working on that property will transfer with it. Like, say you're low on iron, you could look to see if there's any unminted properties that have to be in a mountain, so you could get some more mines and generate some more iron. Or if someone's selling a property that has some good buildings for you, uh, you could pick that up for cheap. So yeah, no, that's definitely something like I, I decided to take Upland and use its properties as essentially like the asset uh, for this game. So that Upland's controlling everything that you own a game. That's cool. And how are, so for instance, you mentioned resources that you'll have to use to build stuff in the game. Is that going to be randomized over the map? How, how are you deciding where those resources go? So I built out a, uh, a mapping generator, so it's not going to be true to life. But it, there's going to be a logic to the madness there. So basically, each city will have its own biome map that I believe uh, there's some previews on the dev diaries that I've posted in my Discord channel, which you can see a link for later. But it will generate a, a biome map for each city. So there will be like mountain ranges going through it, some plains, some desert, you know, some hilly areas, and even some bogs, which I still have to figure out a mechanic to use those for. But, you know, I'll figure that out eventually. So if you need iron, there will be iron deposits at varying strengths in different areas in the mountain ranges. And so you'll have to find them by building mines and like discovering like, oh, there's no iron here. So I might have to try for a different one and sell that property off to someone that needs coal or something that happened to be prevalent there. So resources are a thing. So what kind of buildings will players be able to build in their kingdom? So yeah, for the past week, I've kind of been fleshing out and trying to balance the game a bit. And so right now, I believe I have, ooh, let's see, uh, a blacksmith, you know, to actually turn your, you know, metal into like armor and weapons and stuff. Uh, I got a, you know, smelter to take your ore, turn it into ingots. Um, I have a, you know, cooking pot, kitchen, all, all the classic games uh, types of buildings you'd expect in a medieval builder. And then, uh, you know, a different, couple different training mechanics, uh, like academies to, to, like, you know, train your peasants into, you know, a blacksmith or a farmer or a barracks to train your peasants into, you know, proper troops instead of just guys with pitchforks. So there's a couple different troop types right now. And one of the things I have to do before I release the game is balance out the combat. But sure. the general idea is there's going to be 
archers, cavalry, pikemen, and skirmishers. And so they're going to kind of go in a circle of which one's better than which and which cool. one's kind of weak to which. Yeah. So there, there's going to be a logic to that. It's it's going to be more turn-based style. The plan is right now that every every hour in the real world is one tick, uh, one day in the game world. Oh, and so you'll, ha you'll have a date that slowly counts up. So one year will last... Uh, uh, four days real time, I believe. So each day will be a different season. So every four days, a year will pass in game. So the original idea I had was that when you attack someone else in game, you would attack a specific property. And if you win the battle, you now uh, have that as a vassal property. And so you get a certain okay. percentage of the, um, the production on that property. I still haven't fleshed out the mechanic there completely, so I might switch to something else instead where you vassalize the entire player and then get a smaller percentage of that. Generally, the type of game I enjoy playing are strategy and, you know, empire building type games. So I figured not only do I like to play them, but I also feel like this fits in very well with kind of what people are doing in Upland. They're not necessarily, you know, building, you know, you know, a giant empire out there, but they have a lot of land that they want to make use of, and this seems like a great way to do it. So I am hoping to have it ready by Genesis Week. Uh, I got a few major mechanics left. One is combat that we've talked about, which I have a lot of the framework done for that, but it definitely needs some balancing and polishing before it's ready to go out. And the other is resource markets, because uh, the more I've been playtesting a lot this week, and what I've found is that people are going to need to trade resources fairly quickly from the get-go. And so that's going to be a big part of the game, too. You're going to be have to trade your resources between other players. And I plan on leveraging the uh, the third-party dev tools to allow players to also sell these for upex between each other as well. Who would you recommend to join the Upland Developer Network? Pretty much anyone that has uh, a passion for programming and, you know, is willing to learn. Uh, all are welcome there. I mean, uh, people are very very good at trying to help each other out, you know, learn how to, you know, work with Upland uh, and work with the dev tools and work with all the APIs and the blockchain. Like, uh, there's a good group of developers in there that like to help each other out. So anyone that has any interest in it, who knows, you might find your new hobby or new source of income from there. And so I would join and give it a go, see what you can do. Crumbrindal, where can players find out more, not only about yourself, about your projects, but about Upland Kingdoms? So right now on, uh, I've been using my Upland Optimizer Discord channel uh, to post dev diaries. So every Friday, I try to put a dev diary out talking about you know what I've worked on the last week, what plans I have next, or what ideas I didn't like and had to go back and rework. So I'm trying to balance it, balance it to kind of be on par with how Spark Staking works. Maybe a little bit faster than that, but I, I think I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm really hoping people enjoy it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Grumbrindle, for being on. Everybody, go check out Upland Kingdoms. Check out the Discord link in the description below, and we'll see you guys next time.